face in. Two. And three. Kia! Yeah. Robert Aliano is visiting the Miller Place Middle School he attended more than half his lifetime ago. He's here to bring a warning and a message of hope to students walking in his footsteps. Junior prom, senior prom, right? Some boys and girls make bad decisions those evenings, right? Hopefully this talk today will prevent, it's not gonna prevent everybody, but if we can get across to one or two people, it makes a big difference. When Aliano last roamed the cafeteria he stands in today, he was a successful student on his way to high school and college, on track to a happy, healthy life. He was an A student in Quinnipiac on the dean's list. You know, he was athletic, he had a six pack, he, you know, he, he was a wrestler in Miller Place High School, he was the captain of the wrestling team. He was like in top notch shape. But all that changed in an instant one night during his senior year of college in Connecticut. He had a couple of drinks, he knew not to drive, he walked across the street not judging where the car was and, and it was a hit and run so who knows maybe that person was drinking also. He went flying 50 feet in the air and landed on the pavement. He had broke his humerus, he broke his ankle, he had two punctured lungs, he had a traumatic brain injury. Tragic alcohol and drug related deaths are all too common among high school and college students on Long Island and across America. Robert Aliano is one of the lucky ones. After six weeks in a coma and three months in a rehab center, doctors told the Alianos to give up on their son's recovery. They took an MRI and seen his main stem, stem of his brain was dark, it was dark down. And I said, well, what does that mean? They said, he doesn't, his brain dead. I says, well, how sure are you of that? They said, well, we're 99% sure. I or said, that he won't have any, said, any, he won't function at all. I said, okay, so then we have 1% shot, you think? If you want to look at that way, Mr. Aliano. So from that day on, I said, we'll take the 1% shot. So they were going to have a big meeting on a Monday. And then on that Saturday, I said, can he make up a uh, another rehab? And they gave us a strange, uh, a different rehab girl than he normally gets. A therapy session. A therapy session. And she administered a little pain to his right arm and asked for a command, Robert, hand me a ball. Hand me the ball. And when she administrated pain actually to his leg, he then handed over the ball. So he did his first command. And it was, a, it was amazing, because after that then, then he just kept you know, doing more and more. Like that was the initial thing to kind of woke him up. Six months after the accident, Robert was home. After a year of in-home physical therapy, his father took him to his former martial arts coach, Jerry Figiani. There were so many injuries to his body, but the, the main thing he was concerned about at that point was that he would never be able to walk again. And doctors kind of gave up hope on him. So he asked me if there was anything I could do with him. And at that time, I told him I'll make him a black belt. But I didn't realize that eventually he, it would lead him to leave the wheelchair. I thought I would just teach him some of the basic blocks and punches. Um, you know, in the wheelchair and do stuff with him that way. I know there's a lot of sports like basketball where uh, people that are, you know, wheel wheelchair bound could still participate. So that was my vision of Robert. And then I saw this, this fight in him and I kind of figured that if I could start to push him a little bit more, um, I could get a little bit more out of him. With help from his family and Figiani, Robert not only walked again, he finished his college degree and graduated just two years later than planned. Now Robert and Figiani travel to schools to warn students of the hazards of drugs and alcohol and that drinking and driving aren't the only danger. But then it's gonna come time to go back to your dorm room and you're gonna walk across the street. It wasn't a car accident. He walked across the street and a car came by and hit him. Repeat after me, I must, I must develop myself, develop myself in a positive manner, in a positive manner and, avoid and avoid anything. Their presentation is more than just a warning, as Robert's story of perseverance and standing up to adversity is a major part of their message. But what Robert's doing now, he wants to get out and he wants to spread the message with boys and girls about making the right choice. Right? and having the confidence in yourself to say no and be different. It's okay to be different. You don't have to be like everybody else. If he can talk to people 
and just you know encourage people make the right decisions and if you you know if something bad happens don't give up never give up you can achieve what you want it's in you To learn more and schedule a presentation at your school, visit the website givenasecondchance.com. For Push, Pause, and Miller Place, this is John Schwally.